What's up guys, Takedown here with a different kind of video. I've made a video like this in the past, but before we start, I just wanted to make sure it's clear. This is not clickbait. This is actually true. We don't know 100% of what was going through Chester's mind at the time, and we don't know exactly everything that took place. And the whole reason I'm doing this video is because, as you guys know, I'm a huge Linkin Park fan. Chester's death was... Um, really kind of hard on me and for this past year I've been listening to Linkin Park every single day. A day hasn't gone by where I haven't listened to um, any of their songs. So Chester's wife recently at the January 31st this year's Bell Let's Talk opened up about her husband's death more than any media could do and has done in the past couple months. She explained as we already know, as if you followed Linkin Park or Chester over the past few years or since the band started, he's had struggled with addiction before, uh, drugs and alcohol. Um, he has attempted suicide before, and it's it's always been a cycle with him with mental health. She mentioned, I wasn't aware of this, I never really looked up stuff about Chester Bennington before. But she mentioned as a child, Chester was abused, assaulted, um, didn't really go into detail about that, but that ties in with his mental health. So that made a lot more sense to me. I could understand a little, more, a little bit more from that standpoint. Um, leading up to his death, he went into rehab, he checked himself into rehab, he stayed into rehab for six months, and for those six months he was clean, he was sober. But she didn't really specify is if while he was in there for those six months, if that was when he was just sober or if it was he was in there for six months in rehab and then six months after um, leading up to his death, he was sober. That's the way I portrayed it. Um, you may see it, you may see her uh, video. It's on YouTube now um, of everything she had to say. But that's kind of how I thought it is. He was in rehab for six months. And then after rehab, six months uh, leading up to his death, those six months he was also sober. So that's the way I see it. And those six months after he got out of rehab and was um, with his family in that, of course, promoting the new CD. And he loved it. He felt he got his true emotions out in the new CD, One More Light, which it's a great album. And I back up that statement 100% because I think a lot of the emotions he was going through, you could hear in a lot of the songs, a lot of the different things he was going through, even as a child, um, past addiction. There's a song where he talks about his addictions. And he said stuff to his wife that his wife wasn't aware of. Stuff like he had a lot of guilt every time in the past when he relapsed that that's why it triggered all these suicidal thoughts. And she wasn't aware of that at the time. Um, she did, however, mention that they thought they were past this. They never thought they had to worry about, you know, Chester attempting suicide again. Because back in, I believe it was May of 2017, one of Chester's close friends committed suicide. And she strongly believed that because Chester's seen what his family had to go through, what he went through, what his friends went through, what his um, the guy's children went through, that he now knew um, he didn't want his children, his family, and his friends to go through that same pain as well. But before I continue there, you never know really what somebody's going through. Only they truly know. You can help them. You can support them in as many ways as you can. But at the end of the day, you can't just assume because they've seen it happen to somebody else that that's why they're not going to commit suicide themselves. Um, that's just one statement I just didn't agree with that she said. Because anything can happen. Whenever you have a mental illness, your mind plays tricks on you. And that is what happened in Chester's case. But anyways, leading up to um, his death, fast forward a little bit more. Promoting the CD, promoting One More Light, um, 
in with fans, doing more interviews. And in a lot of interviews, he said about his past addictions and that, which 100% makes sense. I back up everything that went on at the time. Going forward, um, days, uh, maybe it was a week or two before his death, he took his family, his wife and kids, to uh, the cottage, to a cabin. And they were there. That was their vacation at the time. And he actually had to leave early. He was excited he had to leave early. Um, he, he had to leave early because of work. He had to go promote the CD more, do more stuff with the CD. He was excited to do it. Um, it wasn't that he was, oh, I have to leave the kids. He was excited. He was happy because what he was going to go do. And his family loved him for that. So he kissed his wife goodbye, kissed his kids goodbye, said he loved them, and that's the last time they've uh, seen him again. And you can tell in the interview, not really the interview, whenever she was speaking about it on Let's Talk, she was really emotional. And it felt true. It felt... It felt kind of weird that she'd mention that, but... It is what it is. Um... Going forward, she, she explains getting the phone call, which is something anybody is going to remember for the rest of their life. And it was something she was terrified because she didn't believe it could happen to them because she's seen her, they, they seen their friend pass away months ago. They've seen that. They thought they moved past it. They thought rehab helped. Um, so what they had to do, they were still on vacation when it happened. It was a couple days after. As soon as Chester went home is when he did it in their house. And um, he, this is getting harder for me to talk to because I'm just thinking about it and it's making me kind of emotional. But whenever they, the kids and she took her kids home, she wanted to be the first one in the house. She wanted to be the first one in the room that it happened in. And the reason, the reason for that, she makes pretty clear, is because she wanted to be at peace with it. She didn't want it to be something that brought her down. I don't know if they still live there, if they plan on staying there. Me personally, if, the, if I knew a family member, especially somebody that close, passed away, killed themselves in the home, I wouldn't be able to live in that home again. I know that for sure. But she wanted to make peace with it. She didn't want to break down in front of the kids. She didn't want the kids to break down. So she wanted to be the first one in there. And she kind of explains um, what happened. And we can just assume that this is what happened. We'll never know 100% what Chester was thinking, what he was going through, what happened leading up to it. But what she does is she paints a picture of what she assumes happened. And it is the most logical thing anybody has said. Media, you know, media is not the greatest whenever somebody dies. They have so many rumors of this happened, this happened, this happened. Um, but what she says is the room he died, when they found him, when he was found uh, hung, um, I believe he hung himself. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because I, I can't remember. But there was two empty beer bottles. So that's why she tied into um, when she said about... In the past, when he relapsed, he felt a lot of guilt. And what she believes happened was he got home, uh, whether or not the beer was already there. There was two empty beer bottles in the room when he died. So he did drink. He was uh, not drunk. But because he went to rehab, he was sober for so long, he relapsed again. And whenever he, he was drinking, he had the two beers. Um, we, we can say he felt a lot of guilt behind it because in his mind, he knew he relapsed again. And instead of going through that and continue to go through that, he decided just to go and, uh, end his own life, which he did. And she also goes on to say that if maybe if she would have known that guilt thing before she could have stopped it, but then she goes and she turns it. She's like, it's something that you couldn't stop. Um, but what she does continue to go on to say is something tells me Chester um, knew what he was going to do or thought in the future he may kill himself or commit suicide. Because what he had done is he made a separate fund in his will 
This is the odd part, the part that didn't 100% make sense to me. He had a part in his will where, because um, he has kids with his current wife, he had kids with his ex-wife, and he had kids with his ex-girlfriend from a previous relationship. So he has, I want to say it's about five or six kids. After his death, he wanted to make sure they can all see each other. They would continue to see each other for years and years and years. So he made a separate fund in there. It's called the Traveling Fund. So his family, his kids, they don't have to worry because they live different places in the country. They don't have to worry about expenses, plane tickets and such to go and see each other. It's covered. I kind of thought that was kind of weird. Why would Chester make this fund if he knew ahead of time or kind of thought? And maybe his mental illness... Uh, maybe he knew one day it would get the better of him and he would do it. So that's my logic. That's what I believe is. It's just he knew someday something would happen. He would do it. So that's why he wanted his kids to be able to see each other after it happened. Um, and it was kind of shocking. But whenever I heard that, that's why Chester died. Because I didn't understand at the time. And a lot of fans probably felt this way. Is he just had a new CD come out. They're promoting it hardcore. And then to kill yourself didn't make sense. So now that she brought out and basically told people, which I assume it's for the first time because I haven't heard anything about this until I seen Bell Let's Talk about um, him feeling guilty that he just went and drank two beer and he just relapsed after being sober for so long, checking himself in the rehab months ago um, that he just decided to end his life. So. After hearing that, that made it a lot clearer, um, brought me with some closure because now I feel like I ha I've had the closure and it's there. I can move on, even though I know it's a lot of people might watch this and go, well, what do you mean? You didn't really lose anything. Um, I've struggled with mental illness before, suicidal thoughts, stuff like that. That's why I wanted to make this video. I've made a video or two like this in the past explaining it. Not with my face on the camera, but um, that's why it was so hard when Chester passed away on me, especially the not knowing why. Like he, like his songs, Linkin Park songs, has helped me through so much. Losing Chester really hit hard to me. So now that I have the closure, it's easier for me. But so I wanted to say this. Because that is the truth behind uh, Chester's passing. Not 100% of the truth, because you'll never know after somebody commits suicide and takes their own life what they're thinking, what they've done, what they're going through. But his wife painted a better picture than anybody else has. And I wanted to share that with my fans on my channel. Just in case uh, anybody is going through anything, now they can um, kind of connect if anybody is going through anything, if you need somebody to talk to, just know I'm always there. I've been through it before. I still struggle with it from time to time. Right now, I'm, I'm the happiest I have been in my life, so I'm not struggling with it right now. But if you are and you need somebody to talk to, message me on YouTube, comment. Uh, there's my Instagram, my Facebook's on my channel too. Just There's so many ways you can contact me if you need somebody to talk to. And I will talk to anybody who needs it because I know... You need a support system when you're going through this. I didn't have one when I was going through it. I kept quiet, didn't tell friends, didn't tell family, didn't even tell past relationship I was in. Um, but because it's it's something hard you don't want to talk about. But I just want to make it clear in this video, it's okay to talk about it. You can talk about it. It's not something I don't think suicide is going to ever go away. It's ever going to just stop um, being an epidemic. But I just want to be that clear. So I will see you guys in the next one. Just wanted to bring Chester's death, uh, the truth about it, forward more in case anybody that watches my channel didn't know the truth about it. But as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.